Suppose you're an engineer working on the design of a shaft bearing. You know that shaft bearings have a critical speed at which the deflection increases dramatically if you begin to whirl. You want to ensure that given the specification of the machinery, that the shaft bearing will be able to support the operating frequencies of the machinery. We will use MathCAD Prime to calculate the critical speed of the shaft bearing. I have already populated the worksheet with some relevant content. At first glance, you will notice the resemblance to a lab notebook. We can easily embed images into the header of the page, as well as the body of the worksheet. To start, let's format the title of the worksheet by changing its font size and color, and then moving it to the left of the worksheet. Next, we define some variables, starting with the Young's modulus of the material. We will also specify the various dimensions of the shaft bearing. Note that all of these definitions contain units. MathCAD is unit intelligent and is able to compute with units. Now that we have defined the variables, we are able to start our computations. MathCAD allows us to input equations in the exact same way as we will write them on a whiteboard. This is called natural math notation. Note that equations are unit aware and return the results in their appropriate units. We can ask for the results in other units as MathCAD can easily convert between units. We can easily change any of the input variables and MathCAD will update the calculations. We can even set the input variables to be a vector, in which case MathCAD will return the results in a vector of the same size. This allows us to compare results very quickly. To take it one step further, let's say our machinery is rotating up to 22,000 RPMs. We want to make sure that the shaft bearing we design has a critical speed larger than the maximum operating frequency. We use spec tables to set the outer and inner diameters that we want to test. We then use programming within MathCAD to step through all the different combinations of outer and inner diameters. This will give us a result in two matrices. The first matrix contains the critical speeds at various diameter pairings. The second matrix tells us which of these diameter pairings pass and which ones fail, based on the maximum operating frequency. Just as we can change individual variables, we can also change the contents of a spec table. If we remove one entry of the inner diameter, you see that the result matrices update with one less column. To tabulate the results, we can format these two matrices with row and column labels corresponding to the outer and inner diameters. As a final step, we can redefine our equations to take in as input variables the outer and inner diameters. By doing so, we can now plot what the critical speed looks like for a given inner diameter. In this case, we're going to hold the inner diameter at 9 centimeters and see how the critical speed looks. We can add a horizontal line to mark what the maximum operating frequency is. This line will tell us that we need to pick an outer diameter that lies above the red line. Finally, we can see how the critical frequency changes as a function of both the inner and outer diameters. We do this by using a contour plot. In the color map being used, red signifies a higher critical speed. MathCAD allows us to easily check which inner outer diameters of the shaft bearing are acceptable for the operating frequencies of the machinery.